hi and welcome everyone to this lesson in lighting design in this lesson we are going to discuss how can you do the lighting design using manual calculations okay so what are the steps required to do the lighting design first step we need to find the value of lux in each room okay using the electrical code okay and we said before uh, the meaning of flux which is the uh, uh, light intensity per meter square okay the light intensity to give it a very simple definition it is the light intensity light intensity light intensity okay per meter square per meter square okay so of course we said before that each room requires amount of flux how can we obtain this value of flux or the light intensity in a room we can obtain this using the electrical code we said before we can get it using the national electrical code nec we can get to through the iec we can get it uh, from the i uh, iecc uh, and many other codes okay so each one will give you values of flux required in every room according to uh, the application itself if it is an office if it is in a kitchen if it is a bathroom and so on okay so that is the first thing we get lux according to the room second step let's delete all of this we will start selecting our luminaire okay and we said before there are many many different types of luminaires and how can we select it it depends on many factors number one type of room or type of application the height of room we said before there are um, types of um, the luminaires itself there are surface mounted recessed mounted there is also suspended and so on so the height of the room will give us the required application or the required luminaire uh, do we need it suspended or we need it in a recessed surface or recessed mounted or surface mounted and so on so depending on the height as we discussed in the course also the um, cri or the color rendering index which we discussed before we said that we usually for example in office for example we will need at least 80 value of 80 okay cri of 80 also color temperature okay we said we have uh, warm yellow until white so the color temperature we said before according also to the application and we show it when we use uh, or how to select this value also the ib which is a uh, index protection or ingress protection okay this gives us the degree of protection of our luminaire against uh, solids and liquids okay and also we discussed the value of ib required in every application as you will see in this video okay and finally the polar curve polar curve is the shape of the uh, light okay the type of lighting inside our room okay we said that we uh, or how the light is distributed in our room we said we do this using the diffusers such as uh, such as the prismatic uh, the opal and finally the mirror okay or parabolic okay all of this we discussed in the lessons where we discussed each of these elements and finally when we select our luminaire according to the application we will get the number of luminaires required okay so how can we get the number of luminaires finally n which is the number of luminaires is equal to e multiplied by a which is the area e is the luminous flux divided by f multiplied by utilization factor and the maintenance factor and we discussed this Two factors maintenance and utilization and we said usually their multiplication is equal to 0.4 taken as 0.4 okay 
this is the luminous flux or um, this E is the lux required in the room. A is the area of the room, area of our room. F is the lumens produced by each lamp for each lamp or uh, the total lumens, total lumens, okay? Not each lamp, total lumens produced by all of the lamps, okay? So as you can see here, N is the number of lamps required, which is this N. E is the luminous level or the lux required in our room. A is the area of the room itself. Okay. F is the total luminous flux from the lamps. Total flux, a luminous flux or total lumens produced by our lamp. UF is the utilization factor and MF is the maintenance factor. Okay, so we have maintenance factor and utilization factor multiplication as an example point four. Okay, F is the lumens produced by our lamp or our luminaire. We will get it when we select our luminaire. Okay, E the, or the lux required depending on the type of room and the area is of course given area of the room. Now let's start step by step. So we would like to design the lighting, the lighting for an office room. This office room having a dimension of 10 meter length multiplied by 10 meter width. So it is a square, okay? This is a stupid square, but anyway, <laughs> 10 meter multiplied by 10 meter. Okay, something like this. Okay, 10 multiplied by 10 meters. This is our room. Okay, so we have an application which is an office. Okay, we design the lighting for an office. And we said the first step is we need to define the, the lux required in the room. So according to the I, uh, IECC, not the IEC, but IECC, this is another code. Okay, uh, but, uh, the International Energy Conservation uh, Code. Uh, this one gives us the lighting or the lux required in every room. Okay, we discussed this in another uh, lesson about the lux. Okay, when we discussed this before about the codes. Anyway, for example, in an office, we need a lux between 300 and 500. Okay, usually the lux in office taken as the higher value, which is 500. So, we say that the lux in an office between 300 and 500, usually we select it as 500 lux. So E, E here is selected as 500. Okay, that is the first step. And the area is 10 multiplied by 10, which is 100 meter square, right? Utilization factor multiplied by maintenance factor is 0.4. Okay, uh, the only factor remaining, which is F, is the total lumens from lamps. How can we get this when we select our luminaire? Now, let's see each step in selection. The first step is the IB. Remember that we discussed the IB or ingress protection uh, in another lesson of IB uh, values. Okay, we said that in an office, for example, we need IB of 20. IB of 20 is used in general applications like in office building. Okay. Why IB 20? Because um, a higher small value of mechanical protection or solid protection, which is two and zero protection against water. Okay. Because it is not important to have a protection against uh, liquids. Okay. Because we have an office. Usually there is no rain or water or whatever. So usually we select IB20. Okay. Now, second thing is the uh, color temperature. How can we select the color temperature? We discussed the color temperature before. And we said we have many ranges in Kelvin. Okay. Usually in an office room, as you can see in the slides, which we discussed before, office is equal to 4,000 Kelvin. So we need at least 4,000 and the higher is also okay. 
so we will need between 4000 and 5000 kelvin okay the color temperature the color is white so we can see all of the colors uh, clear and also we need a value between 4000 and 5000 kelvin also the CRI or the color rendering endings in an office should not be less than 8 in order to see objects with their real colors okay now the last thing which is a polar curve we would like here we have an office and we would like a polar curve like this which we can focus on the desk itself okay something like this this curve or this polar curve can be achieved using uh, opal luminaire or opal diffuser and also mirror or parabolic diffuser okay the polar curve the following shape can be obtained using opal or mirror diffuser or the parabolic diffuser okay now remember that we have an important note we would like to understand the type of enclosure okay and when we talk about the type of enclosure we are talking about is it a surface mounted or it is a recessed mounted or is it um, suspended for example and so on so usually in an office office in an office building we have an HVAC system in an office building so we will need we have a concrete ceiling concrete ceiling and we have another ceiling called the false ceiling again we discussed this before but just a reminder we will have another um, ceiling called the recessed or the false ceiling so usually why we have another ceiling because between them we will add here the HVAC system HVAC system and cable tray okay between them between the concrete here we have the concrete and here we have the uh, recessed okay so usually we use a recessed type um, recessed type uh, luminaire okay so remember all of the other factors which we discussed the color rendering the temperature all of this is factors or are factors in selection of luminaire another factor is what is the type of the enclosure we said it is a recessed okay and as you know that in an office or office building applications we will need either a fluorescent lamps or led lamps depending on the budget of the owner so usually we will select the fluorescent type okay we said that the fluorescent is used in these applications now let's go and select um, the luminaire itself from the catalog okay here i'm going to um, select from the philips uh, catalog and i'm going to provide you with a link to this catalog okay now inside the philips uh, catalog you will find many many types of luminaires okay you will find um, folders one folder containing catalogs for indoor lighting one for outdoor um, another one for other applications okay uh, for example here since we are dealing with office it means indoor lighting okay you will find like 20 pdf each of these pdf containing um, a type of lighting which is used in indoor which usually can be used in our case okay as an example one of them which is most famous is this one okay it is um, 60 uh, centimeter multiplied by 60 centimeter lens multiplied by width okay which is tbs165 okay this one let's understand in the catalog what does this mean okay the most important elements for us so as you can see this one one two three four it contains four lamps okay four lamps as you can see here tbs165 g4 multiplied by tl5 
TL5 usually mean fluorescent lamp. Okay, TL5 usually a fluorescent lamp. As you can see, 4 multiplied by TL5, 14 watt. So what does this mean? It means we have 4 lamps. 1, 2, 3, 4. Each of these lamps has a 14 watt. Okay, 4 pieces of lamps. Each one of these is 14 watt. So the total wattage is 14 multiplied by 4. That is the first thing. Second thing, as you can see here, the color code is 130. Here, not in Kelvin, but a color code. Okay, there is a difference between them. Color code and Kelvin. The white is 4000 Kelvin. However, color code is something else. Okay, as you can see, warm white as required in my own application. Now, as you can see, it is a parabolic, okay, which provides us with a polar curve, which is suitable for our application. Okay, now let's see more. As you can see, more specs here. Light source color, 830 uh, warm white. As you can see, the ingress protection code, IB20, which is as I selected, same as the one which I need for my own application. Now let's go down. You will find here the dimension of the uh, luminaire itself, the length and width and the thickness or the height. And you can find here more information. Now as you go down here, you can see this one. Okay, let's go here like this. Okay. Like this, zooming in. Now we will find here something which is really, really important. First thing, you will notice here 4 multiplied by 1200 lumens. So what does this mean? We have 4 lamps. Each lamp produces 1200 lumens. So 4 multiplied by, by 1200 is 4800 lumens. So we will use this value to substitute in our equation to get number of luminaires. So this value is the one which we need to obtain the uh, light intensity. Okay, so as you can see, it is given inside the catalog itself. Second thing is the polar curve. We said in our course, we have two, as you can see here, we have two polar curve, depending on the angle which we install our luminaire. Okay, we said that from 0 to 800 gives us this polar curve and from 90 to 270 degree gives us this other polar curve. If you don't know this, go to the lecture of the two polar curve or why do we have multiple polar curves? Okay, so this shape is the one which I need in my own office. Okay, so this uh, type of uh, luminaire can be used in my own application of office. Okay, it has IB20. It has a warm white with a high color rendering index. Um, it has a polar curve required and so on. Okay, so let's get back. We said that the selected luminaire is uh, TBS165. This one which we selected and with 1200 lumens. The, as you can remember, four multiplied by 1200 lumens okay so a fluorescent lamp one lamp inside this luminaire is a 14 watt lamp and gives us between 840 and 1400 lumens where did i get this value from this table as you can see here this one is the luminaire which i selected this table gives you an overview an average value about the lumens per watt for each type of lamp. So as you can see the fluorescent tube lamp or fluorescent tube from 60 to 100 lumens for each watt. Since we have 14 watt, multiply 14 by 60 and 14 by 100, you will have from 840 to 1400 lumens. Inside the catalog it is given directly that the lumens of this uh, one for each lamp is 1200 which is in this range so the total lumens provided by this um, 
this one what does this mean it is the luminir this luminir gives us a total lumens of 4 multiplied by 1200 which is in total gives us 4800 lumens okay now what is what is the next step we have our room 10 multiplied by 10 and we will use this equation number of luminaires required in the office room okay remember that all of these steps we don't do we simply use the dialex program the dialex program gives us all of the values easily okay now the e or the uh, lux required in the room is 500 a, uh, a is the area which is 100 meter square F is the total lumens produced by one luminaire, which is 4,800 lumens. Utilization factor 0.5, maintenance factor 0.8. Their multiplication gives us 0.4. Okay. So by taking all of these values and substitute here, we will have the number of luminaires required is 23.1, which can be approximated to either 23 or 24 okay but usually usually when you are dealing with approximation try to get an even number or not a prime number okay not a prime number so 24 is the one which we are going to use 23 is a prime number so we will use 24 okay so this is the number of luminaires required in this room 24 luminaires now we would like to know how many luminaires I will install in the width and how many I will install in the lens. So there is a law which helps us to get number of luminaires in lens and the number of luminaires in width. So lens is equal to square root of n, n which is the total number of luminaires which is 24 multiplied by width which is 10 multiplied by lens which is 10. Okay. So the square root gives us 4.9, which means nearly 5 luminaires required, okay? Now, number of luminaires in width, same law, but instead of width, it will be length over width, okay? So it will give us same value since the length is equal to the width, so it will be 5, okay? So as you can see, we have 5 luminaires in length. 5 luminaires in width which means we will have instead of 24 luminaires we will have 25 luminaires okay now how can we draw this it will be like this 1 2 3 4 and 5 and also here 1 2 3 4 and 5 and so on you will repeat this here and here and here and here okay so we will have 5 multiplied by 5, which is 25 luminaires. Now, did we finish? No. We have to do a two checks. First one, we have to make sure that distance between two luminaires is great, double the distance or double the distance between the luminaire and the wall. Okay. So this distance, uh, D, is equal to 2x 2x where x is the distance between luminaire and the wall like this okay that is the first check second check is that space space to height ratio height ratio is less than one so what does this mean is space is the space between two luminaires a space between two luminaires two height means divided by the height height of the room is less than one remember that the height of the room here is three meters okay the space we would like to get the space now and make sure it is less than one and make sure that this space is double the distance between it and the wall okay so let's see distance between two luminaires in length in length is the total length divided number of luminaires in length so we have total length which is 10 and how many luminaires in length we have one two three four five 
which means 10 divided by 5 is 2 meters. Okay. Distance between luminaires in width is width divided by number of luminaires in width. So since they are the same, so it will give us also 2 meters. So what does this mean? It means distance between each luminaire is 2 meters. Here also 2 meters. Here we will have 2 meters and here we will have 2 meters. Now we would like to get x here and this x. Okay, so 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is gives us 8 meters, right? And the total is 10 meters. Total is 10 meters. Okay, so we have x and we have another x. So 2x is equal to 10 minus 8. So the total is 10 meters. And from here to here is 8 meters. So 10 minus 8 gives us x plus x, which is 2x. So our x will be 1 meter. Now, as you can see, distance between two luminaires is double the distance of between a luminaire and wall. So that is the first check. Second one is the uh, space to height ratio, which is space, which is 2 divided by the height of the room less than one so this design is correct okay now some important notes here we have space and height of room height means height to the working plan okay so usually usually okay usually this height is a height of the room minus 80 centimeter okay point eight which is a working plan okay this this is 18 centimeter okay so the first thing is that the spacing to mounting height ratio shr is the spacing between luminaires between two luminaires divided by their height above the horizontal reference plan which is divided uh, divided by the height above the working plan okay we have to make sure that recommended value is half okay so s divided by the height is one over two okay and also can be specified by the manufacturers usually we need to make sure that it not exceed unity it is less than one okay and the space between luminaires that's the second check should be double the distance between a luminaire and the wall so this is how can you design the lightening of or lighting not lightening <laughs> lighting of a room uh, by using manual calculations again we don't use this in um, lighting design we usually use the dilex or dilex eve okay Thank you and see you in another lesson. Before you go, I would like to invite you to our academy, Khadija Academy. You will find our course for electrical design here in the description below or in the first comment of this video. You will learn about uh, AutoCAD, Dialex, um, how to design the lighting system how to uh, design the electrical system such as panel schedule um, circuit breakers and cables how to do the single line diagram um, how to do the load estimation selection of transformer generator room uh, voltage drop earthing system design generator sizing um, ubs uh, lighting protection um, also you will learn about light current systems such as fire alarm MATV, telephone, data, CCTV, sound system, and also in addition to ETAP. So this course also is updated frequently with more and more content. Thank you and see you in our course.